Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today we have actually a really special kind of vintage reissue highlight where we'll even discuss the power of nostalgia and what that plays into these types of releases. We're just really going to discuss why vintage reissues are so popular and what are some, of course, recent examples of reissues done right. We have a great selection here of four awesome watches from my own personal collection and even now as i sit here i think these actually could make a really great vintage reissue for watch collection like if i didn't have any other watches technically just owning these four would absolutely be able to sustain me in terms of any need and whether it be color complication um you know the the modules or movements it, it really does cover a wide array even uh you know four hertz versus three hertz or you know that ticking seconds hand or a digital display uh versus analog so a lot of options here guys and uh you know again i think it does tie into nostalgia which is actually derived from the greek words nostos or return and algos or pain so the literal meaning can be interpreted as the pain from an old wound. It's the twinge in your heart, far more powerful than memory alone. As Madman's Don Draper would so eloquently state in his very memorable uh, Kodak carousel pitch from Mad Men, uh, which is a great show. And it's one of those things where I do honestly believe that that's very true. It's not just memories, it's about that longing for those simpler times. And uh, I think that combined with, of course, modern build quality and specs and materials can really make something that's quite enticing, which is why these vintage reissues have been very popular and continue to be very popular uh, even in the year of 2023 going into 2024. So with all that said, let's actually hear a quick word from our sponsors before we pick these pieces up and take a closer look. They say you don't just buy the product, you buy the seller too. Well, here's a seller I can absolutely recommend. Belmont Watches in San Diego. They deal in both new and pre-owned from industry mainstays to niche independence, across vintage and modern references. I've personally purchased watches from them and even had watches serviced and repaired through the local network. Whether you're just browsing current inventory or searching for a special reference, reach out and connect. You never know, they might be able to source the exact model you've been looking for. They drop new models every Thursday and even offer free two-day shipping on all orders. Check out this amazing one-owner find. A true piece of history equipped with genuine one-off memorabilia personal to the Royal Canadian Air Force pilot who wore it proudly for so many years. You just can't find packages like this via standard retail. It takes real-world industry experience to create an offering like this. And if you're ever local, visiting downtown San Diego, you can check out their selection in person or just stop by and talk shop with some fellow enthusiasts who also happen to be some of the most down to earth and knowledgeable guys in the industry. So before your next big purchase, make sure to check out Belmont Watches and tell them Mark sent you. Thanks guys. All right, and we're back. So, you know, another big shout out to Belmont Watches. Of course, their support of the channel enables me to do segments like this that aren't necessarily watch review related, uh, you know, talking about different subjects. So what we're going to have here is a real nice assortment of recent vintage reissues and all of them actually should be available during the time of uh this filming but you know whenever you watch this whether it's this year or next or way down the line you stumble across this we'll see what's still available and what other variations may have been released by then so we do have of course the seiko prospects uh land mechanical gmt known as the spb 411 navigator timer reissue which is a great piece from seiko we have the nevada grenchen f77 in the blue dial no date uh setup there another awesome piece and of course momentum c courts in black uh which is fantastic and uh on the probably the most recent release uh actually no the most recent release probably be the seiko but um the most recent acquisition for me was actually this piece which is the casio vintage a11 100 um 
And these actually represent not only just a diverse group in terms of the complications, styles, colors, and all that, but also um, in terms of price point, 1500, uh, 1260, uh, 259, and then 135. So there's something for a lot of different budgets. And honestly, uh, for a four watch collection, even if you added all of those up and you paid full retail, you would actually have a pretty good little collection for not too much money uh, when you think about it. So, uh, what we'll go ahead and do is just kind of work our way from left to right and go from there. So we have, of course, this beautiful Seiko reissue. I mean, they've been really doing some great things recently, and this, for me, has hit a real sweet spot. Of course, they've always had uh, those higher-end releases in terms of their reissues, but then uh, normally their stuff that was more attainable would be more of a recreation or reimagining, so nice to see them do a reissue that was... Um, I think really elevates above your typical kind of reimagining and uh, stays very, very true to form, but of course adds in all those modern niceties like getting that brushed stainless steel insert versus before, I believe it was just an anodized gray <laughs> insert, right? Um, and then of course, instead of uh, uh, plexiglass or hardlex, here you're gonna be getting a very nice box dome sapphire with a, a, a you know anti-reflective coating, solid, bracelet my goodness very very nice again uh, quite reminiscent and not quite to the same level but also not quite as expensive as my um, SJE uh, King Seiko reissue so 1500 bucks MSRP but I'm sure you'll be able to get them for lower than MSRP this is Seiko guys and these are limited to 4000 but again 4000 isn't necessarily limited it's just to let you know that if you're going to save up for one of these don't save up too long because within the next two to three years these will all be gone and you'll only be able to find them on the secondary market where you know those are prices that Seiko can't control so if they become more desirable more collectible from that standpoint and more scarce you could be paying more than MSRP so you do have, um, you know, again, a little bit about the history. This is a faithful recreation of the 1968 Seiko 6117-8000, which was the brand's first GMT-style watch with a rotating bezel. And uh, yeah, this thing is sweet. It's very, very nice. I, I dig it a whole lot. And it's honestly probably one of my favorite releases from Seiko this year. It, it has a 38.5 millimeter uh width there and then a 12.8 millimeter thickness with a 42 and a half i'm sorry 42 i'm sorry 45.2 millimeter lug to lug so very very nice of course i have full uh in-depth reviews of all of these timepieces but in terms of what this represents for me is it's a very high end feeling piece and again ultimately it is fully in house um and this is, you know, some of you might be thinking, well, I can get a $500 Seiko, um, you know, GMT that's fully in-house. Well, that's going to be the 4R base movement versus this one, which is 6R base, which means that this actually does have that full three-day, 72-hour power reserve, which is a very desirable thing, especially if you do keep your watches in a decent rotation and you're not wearing them every day. It's nice to know you can put this one down and pick it up a couple days later, and it's still going to be running and keeping good time. So... Very nice from that perspective. But moving on, right, if you're not necessarily needing the extra complication, you're not needing, uh, you know, let's say a timing bezel to change uh, and monitor multiple time zones, uh, you have another option here, which as much as GMTs are really back in style, guys, with, uh, <clears throat> of course, everyone wanting to be able to travel again, thanks to the end of the pandemic, we have something like this beautiful Nevada Grenchen F77. So this is a Swiss made reissue of the 1977 classic um, that is uncompromising on design and finish quality. So really uh, in terms of the design, such a close one to one, but recreated with such a higher level of finishing and quality. Uh, I mean, the original one that was released was definitely more of a tool watch. This I think really, almost i'd say it dips its toes into something just a little bit more luxurious just because of the very very high level of fit and finish and even the tolerances on this very unique true to form uh integrated bracelet style 
So this goes for 1260 MSRP, 37 millimeters in diameter, 11.6 millimeters thin, and 45 millimeters lug to lug. It does have that fixed porthole style bezel, which of course is going to be, you know, quite. <clears throat> nostalgic towards uh the gerald genta porthole design watches uh you know within history and again this goes all the way back to 1977 where yes it wasn't an original super original watch back then but it's really cool that it's still a very honest reinterpretation of an original watch for them right this was a watch that was made by nevada they were on the train before the train left the station um so i think that's cool so before you know genta's designs became came so mainstream and you know there was a time when people thought they were very odd when you looked at the royal for what the royal oak was during that time frame i mean it, it definitely shook up the industry and, and saved uh ap in a lot of ways so I think that's really, really cool, and of course, an interesting tie to uh, history. Box Dome Sapphire in our air coating, screw down crown, which is great. 10 atmospheres or 100 meters of water resistance. It has an automatic Soprod PO24, which is going to be quite comparable to something like a, an ETA 2824 38 hour power reserve. You know, it does have that nice smooth four hertz beat, which is great. And then you also are getting no date. So very, very clean. Um, and although, you know, this is like more vintageized than the original because the original had a date. Uh, but of course, a lot of collectors today really enjoy that perfect symmetrical balance. And you'd get that here. Also, Modern Nicety, it's a no date style, but it also has no ghost position on that crown. So really nice to have you pull that out, hack the movement, and not worry about cycling through a ghost date position. So very, very cool. Now, getting on to the more affordable side, we have this little bad boy right here, the Momentum C Quartz. And some of you are thinking, Momentum wasn't the original makers of the C Quartz. You're right, because the brand Momentum was founded by the guys who originally made the C Quartz. The, the original founder in terms of uh, Chrono Swiss, I believe, was, was the name of the old company. Correct me in the comments if I miss recalling that. But essentially, this is a modern recreation of the original Magnum P. I watch, of course, with updated specs. Now you're getting Sapphire, which is fantastic. 259 MSRP, and you can get it uh, for a little bit more. You can actually get a new Jubilee style bracelet with it, which for some of you, that will be amazing. For me, I really do like, of course, this vintage aesthetic with a Tropic style strap, which is very nicely executed, even has quick release spring bars there. So very, very cool. 42 millimeters in diameter, 11 millimeters thin, 47 millimeters lug to lug. So not going to be the most compact dive watch but i mean in a world of vintage reissues where big crowns or you know all the rage it's nice to see something a little bit more forward thinking being reissued from a later time period when larger watches were starting to kind of come into their own without it being oversized feeling in any way so you do get this great of course 120 click rotating dive time bezel unidirectional sapphire um Unidirectional in terms of its action and then sapphire in terms of the insert uh, and it, it has loom baked into it You guys can see there which I think is really outstanding uh, 300 meters of water assistance, right uh, the, the, as the dive watch of the group. Hey, that's outstanding And that's actually historical to this watch right the C quartz 30 So the, that 30 atmospheres is again period correct It's being run by the quartz Ronda R507 which is a high torque movement So it does allow you to have these you know, slightly larger and bulkier handsets that you really wouldn't be able to have on your typical quartz powered movement. This has a 45 month or 3.75 year battery life as well. So although it's not solar powered and it's not mechanical, you can, you know, have this for a decent amount of time uh, in terms of, you know, not worrying about swapping out the battery. And of course, since it's keeping quartz time, the nice thing is uh, you don't have to worry about it drifting, you know, too heavily day to day. It's more something you want to keep track on month to month, how far you off if you want to rehack the movement. Uh, but this is just a really fun piece. And again, it ties back and I like the extra bit of street cred in that 
it's from the original makers from the original brand runners, right? And now that name is old and been sold off. And yes, you can get something that has the old name on it, but for it to be, again, tied to that nostalgia of the original creators and the original brand runners, I think that's just really, really cool. Now getting into the most affordable piece in this lineup, guys, and some might even argue the most handsome and, and you know, a bit of a polarizing handsomeness, right? Uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, ties back to some of the more brutalist designs of uh, the 1970s, but this is a beautiful Casio Vintage A1100D. Now, this is a 1970s 52QS-14 Bravo full metal revival of a timeless retro favorite. Now with some premium shine in terms of the fit and finish and the quality of the construction. Now the module isn't gonna be as uh, forward leaning as the original uh, from that perspective, but it still gives you all of the basic things you would expect. I mean, some hardcore collectors might be upset about down to the split second of the chrono timer, but you know what? I'm not one of them. For $135 or less, because of course you guys can you don't have to buy these from Casio directly or from an authorized dealer. Um, and, you know, a lot of dealers will have sales. So you can get this, you know, I'm sure for much less. Stainless steel construction, which is great. And you don't rarely see that, uh, which I should say, because it's normally something within this line would be a resin case with resin uh, glass uh, versus this has mineral glass. And so we were like, man, why couldn't they put sapphire? You know what, guys? You're pay paying for... $400 full metal G-Shocks that have mineral glass, just so you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think Sapphire at $135 is a necessity. Would it be a nicety? Would it have been great? Sure, it, it would have been. And you know what? A better backlight would have been cool too. Um, but for, again, for the market, a lot of people who are buying these watches aren't even really into watches. Some of them might just be honest Casio fans and they are not looking for anything outside of that. And there's a lot of brands that are spending a lot more money and charging a lot more money for something that will recreate this beautiful retro aesthetic. And that goes for all of these pieces, right? There's a lot of brands that are putting money into recreating aesthetics that are not native to their own design language. And I think that's another perk of looking into these pieces when they're a reissue, because again, it's just has a pure heritage and bloodline and you find people and, you know, not everybody's a Casio collector, but the ones that are, right? The ones that truly feel like Casio is God tier, those guys will appreciate this. And that goes for Seiko collectors, Nevada Grinch and collectors, as well as, you know, vintage television show aficionados. I mean, momentum, not as much, right? But there's a lot that falls within to that category. I mean, momentum watches are great, but it just they haven't been around that long. So at least the brand name hasn't. Uh, the team behind it definitely has. But back on track here, guys, 38 point uh, so I'm sorry, 34.8 millimeters lug to lug, 8.8 millimeters thin, 40 millimeters lug to lug. So did I say 34.8 millimeters lug to lug? I meant 34.8 uh, millimeters across. 20 millimeter lug width. So this is actually compatible with a lot of other straps. You could put this uh, on a regular strap, which I think is cool. Um, normally they'd be 18 millimeters and they have some kind of hooded uh, functionality or just something that might look a little awkward where you need a little bit of a flare. Uh, I think this is cool, but this bracelet to me is fantastic. I don't have a hairy arm, as you can see, thanks to my parents and their bloodline. Um, I will say that this is not a hair puller for me, and I've known a lot of people that, like, let's say Matt Farrow will adamantly tell me that, uh, you know, there's no such thing as hair pullers and he has super hairy arms and it's just it's you know if you want to look for problems you'll find them right so uh if you want to look for problems i'm sure you'll find some this is hollow right uh this is uh stamped all that but you know what it's twin trigger push button I like that. Um, and then of course it's true to the construction in terms of the style, but you can see the tolerances are so much tighter. Look how beautiful this is. Like you would, 
it's hard to even tell that that's hollow just at a glance until you turn it to the side. And even when you turn it to the side, these tolerances are so much tighter that it's even harder to notice then. So I don't know. Uh, there's a lot to appreciate there, guys. Um, this does, you know, it, it's the least splash resistant or water resistant at bat only being splash resistant. But you know what? At the same time, if you have these other watches that are a lot more water resistant and overly water resistant in some cases, um, you don't really need to have this one for water sports. This can be almost just an everyday or a dressy style watch. And I think that's cool that you can have that retro dressy aesthetic uh, for not a lot of money, especially considering that a lot of people don't really dress up anymore, right? Casual is the new, uh, you know, uh, sign of wealth, <laughs> right? Um, versus dressing up is, hey, yeah, you dress up for work. You're a worker versus, hey, when you're your own boss, you're going to dress a little bit more casual, right? So it's, it's very interesting. Of course, there's, you know, stealth wealth and, and, you know, old money and all the different trends that are out there. But there's something that is really still very captivating and engaging about this beautiful piece right so i dig that 36 month or three year battery life so again uh, although not solar powered and not completely uh you know devoid of maintenance uh swapping out a battery after three years isn't going to be quite a big deal right and they'll probably run even longer than that um you know if you're not just riding on that light button there too long uh so very very cool uh, and I'm, I'm just digging this one, guys. So, uh, again, full reviews exist already for all of these timepieces. So, in terms of uh, getting them uh, on the wrist and all that, that's that all exists. So, definitely check out those reviews. But for me, guys, just talking about these now as a whole, um, yeah, you know, number one, before I jump into my thoughts, hey, this segment has been brought to you by Belmont Watches in San Diego. Thanks again for allowing me to share my thoughts with my audience by supporting the channel uh, through sponsorship. So um, closing thoughts here, guys. Classic looks with modern build quality and up spec materials combined with a healthy dose of nostalgia to create a deeper, more emotional co connection can really help any of these pieces find their way into your collection or into an entire collection on their own. Like, again, these could be a sub collection of watches. And uh, I don't know, there's just something really fun and interesting about that. Um, you got a gray dial, you got a blue dial, black dial, you got a, you know, you got analog time, you got GMT, you got no date, you got a dive time bezel with complexity, you got a 24 hour bezel um, with that complexity, bi-directional versus, um, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> bi-directional versus only turning one way um uh, unidirectional there you go and then yeah you know you add digital display versus analog display and then of course that digital display does offer you some other timing options setting alarms uh you know running a chronograph not down to the small split second but hey i think it gets you to you know seconds or tenth of a second uh which isn't too shabby in this day and age when you could just whip out your phone at any time to do something like that so with all that said let me know what you guys all think in the comments below if you like the video please do a like and if you haven't already please do subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys